you've, you've written a column um, about sort of the, 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 the vagaries of being an Apple product. Tell us about it. So um, obviously with the new iPad coming out on Friday, there's this big question of how long can the iPad maintain its majority share of the market? And if we look at what happened in, with the iPhone, over time all the Android devices, about three years after the iPhone first came out, um, Android was greater in market share in some and uh, in total than the iPhone. And this is like a pretty important issue for Apple and, and that in the smartphone that we see quite a war between the Android devices and the iPhone. And so now the question is, what are we going to see in tablets? Are we going to see Apple hold on to that lead or are Android devices going to eventually eclipse it? Um, and right now there's a lot of evidence and a lot of industry insiders say it looks like Apple's going to hold on to that lead which is more akin to what happened with the iPod music player, which still has the dominant share to this day. And Jessica, how much of the lost uh, market share that the Apple phone product suffered a reflection of, of consumers' frustration uh, with a relatively poor performance uh, of the, the phone as a phone? I mean, the tablet, I think everybody thinks, is a feature-rich product, and Apple has the, uh, Apple has the, you know, the best widget on the street. By so good far. question. I mean, the thing that comes up often for why Android gained share quickly in smartphones was actually pricing and the fact that AT&T had an exclusive. So other wireless carriers needed something to sell, so they subsidized and marketed other Android phones. Um, but I also think you're right. It's important that people buy phones for lots of different things, for the apps, but also right for the phone. Um, people are buying a tablet if they want the apps and if they want that sort of premium experience right now. That could change as the market broadens, but right now the tablet sweet spot is the more affluent consumer who's the Apple sweet spot. Well, and there's another way to look at it. I don't think people are buying tablets. I think people are buying iPads. I mean, I think that's the way to look at it is people don't wake up in the morning and say, oh, I'm going to buy myself a tablet today. They want to buy themselves an iPad. And maybe they don't want to spring for the extra money and they go with the alternative route. But I think that, is that fair, Jessica? I think it is, and I think, you know, it's interesting to look back. I mean, there's similar dynamics with the iPhone, but it was also very different. Apple and Google were tiny players fighting against Nokia and RIM. Um, there are lots of different phones on the market. Um, you know, the iPhone got awesome reviews pretty early out of the gates, too, and, and people, you know, wanted an iPhone as well as a smartphone. But particularly price-sensitive ones and overseas, those Android devices were, were pretty attractive. and. We're not seeing the same um, feature capabilities and more importantly, the same sort of app ecosystem um, in the Android tablets right now as the and, iPad. And Jessica, how much of, of Apple's ability to simply market its products, either through the retail channels or, or simply create that, that, uh, that mystique around an Apple, the, uh, an, you know, an Apple branded product, how much of an advantage does that give them over Android based tablets? Yeah. A lot. And actually, Andy Rubin, who runs Android for Google, um, sort of said as much uh, Mobile World Congress a few weeks ago, talking about, you know, people need to learn what they can do with their tablet. Tablets have to be marketed in terms of the whole ecosystem. And that's, you know, all the apps available. And that's an experience that he said lends itself more to sort of a retail store than a wireless carrier. Um, and of course, Apple has retail stores. There are lots of other chains like Best Buy where you can get Apple and Android products. But uh, another argument that you hear for why the iPad's going to have a sizable lead for a while is in fact the Apple store and that environment, which is more important to selling this kind of device than a phone. Yeah, the Apple store in New York City, the flagship store, being the single most photographed landmark in New York City. What, what did you get that? That's great. That, I didn't yep. know that. That's I. I thought it was you. Um, no, 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 but <laughs> I, no, that you're the single most photographed icon. Uh, but I mean, but, uh, that's amazing. Yeah. No, it's remarkable. People, you know, especially over the holiday season, when New York, when Midtown was flooded with tourists, you know, people wanted to get their photo taken in front of the Apple Store. A lot of times, obviously, you know, on a uh, on a you know a, an Apple phone product. So, Jessica, what's the single most photograph thing in San Francisco do you know I don't know and it's probably not an Apple store although they are working on a new concept store that's gonna be a totally different design in Palo Alto and I bet you will see a lot of photos of that new one 